Welcome to Let's Play Rule the Waves 2 as France, starting in 1920. This is episode 12, and we're just at the start of the war with the Soviet Union. I'm going to summarise some key events in order to crunch down the length of this video so that we can jump straight in to the middle of a fleet battle. Just as war broke out, we had three new 16-inch guns returned to us. One, the Ducan battlecruiser, is still working up, but two, the Courbets, are straight from refit, and so they're available immediately. I was planning to have a nice fleet exercise to bring up crew quality, but unfortunately, a foreign policy gaffe caused the war to start sooner than I expected. I wanted to create the opportunities for blockade because I think blockade is going to be the main way that I win this war because there's such a disparity of strength that I think the Soviets will decline often. So I redeployed the fleets in several ways in order to ensure that in Northern Europe I had superiority, bearing in mind that the Soviet Union has a negative modifier on its blockade anyhow. And I took advantage of the arrival of a new technology to allow us to build a major fleet carrier to build the Pan Leve. The Pan Leve is required to have 8 inch guns, so I've pushed them down into casemates in order to limit the weight as well as only giving them 80 rounds. I've managed to squeeze on 70 aircraft onto a 27,800 ton displacement, giving it a pretty good anti aircraft outfit. On 29 knots. It's not the last word in carrier design for the carriers to come, but it's part of that experimental carrier development program that we all have to go through. Because I refitted the Courbet and the Magenta with 16 inch guns, I was able to reduce the block obsolescence problem speeding up the replacement of 12-inch gun ships, the arrival of the Ducan meant that La Touche Treville could be scrapped. And thinking about all these other six ships that will have to be replaced at some point, I've designed a modest battleship, modest in the sense of cost. So this only costs 152,000. I was hoping for something like 130,000, but there is a trade-off between not really being a viable ship for the next 20-30 years. It is slow at 23 knots. It is essentially a Nelson or Rodney trading a decent secondary battery for an extensive anti-aircraft outfit. I'm not sure if I'm going to roll out six of these Marangos. There will come a point at which I will want to stop building slow battleships, move to fast battleships, but for now I think it offers some value, certainly over the 12 inch ships that I want to replace. With the start of war, I naturally moved the corvettes to trade protection and the submarines to fleet support. There's no point putting your submarines onto trade warfare when there's no merchant ships out because you're blockading them. The first battle, as I predicted, was a cruiser action and the USSR declined it. The next one was a convoy defence battle, which did start, but then the Soviets didn't show up at all. Moving on the turn, I did achieve blockade against the Soviet Union, and a third battle occurred, a fleet action in the Lower Baltic. And that's what we're going to deal with right now. To orientate you, we have four forces. Down here, we have the carriers, Along with a heavy screen, we've got a couple of Doucet 13 inch gun battlecruisers. Over here, misplaced, we have, we have another two Duque battlecruisers in the scouting force. But as you can see, the scouting force is really uh, weirdly in the rear rather than in the van. Over here, we have the main battle force, two Bouvet class 15 inch gun battleships. And then over here, we have the Marseille and another heavy cruiser out in front scouting for the battle fleet. For the Soviets, we have three forces. In the rear, we have a group of heavy cruisers. These heavy cruisers aren't like over here. We have another force of heavy cruisers, ditto. And in the center, with the battleship in the lead, 
is Russian battle fleet. They only have one. So that's how they are deployed. If we just zoom in and have a look at this common turn, you can see it's got 10 inch guns like a cruiser, but it's got a nine inch belt. The Marseille for comparison has a five inch belt and 26 knots. Heavily protected for a cruiser, and certainly I don't expect my cruisers to make much of an impression against them, so I'm not going to go toe to toe. They will inflict some damage on the battleships. My battleships have 12 inches of armour, and they will be interesting opponents. Interesting to see whether this odd mixture will be successful or not. Let's zoom out and zoom out again. My plan is for the carriers to keep in contact but not get too close and obviously unleash a torpedo strike. The scouting force in the rear are going to go as fast as they can and try and get into contact with the enemy but I'm resigned to the fact that they might not play a significant part in this battle. The battle fleet I would like to take to the north. I've been going to the east but that seems to be just playing along with the Russians. I would like to split them up and go north, either forcing them to turn around or taking this group of heavy cruisers and separating them from their battleship and this group of heavy cruisers. My cruiser force I'm going to take down because they are unfortunately outclassed by these pocket battleships. That's the plan. Let's see how that works. I am resigned also to the fact that I only have one go at this. There's only an hour and a half or so. So let's zoom in and get our guys going. So we're going to go north, this group, at 20 knot. Uh, these guys have been set to core with the Marseillaise. Hmm, okay, they're not really doing that very well. I'm going to take them off AI uh, and bring them down. The Marseillaise, I'm going to take to the south. I'm going to take its speed up a little bit. That's those here. We're cranked up to 28 knots. Not everybody in this force will be able to, um, to do that. I mean, it's a classic here. There are three heavy cruisers um, who are only capable of 25 knots. I would have put them with the battleships and would have um, put the Marseille with the scout force and be better matched for speed. Carriers, I'm going to put them onto AI and remind myself occasionally to watch what the heck they're doing because you know how that goes. These cruisers here are still in scout. Um, I don't think that's appropriate anymore. So not much happening over here. The battleships have decided to pay attention to these heavy cruisers rather than the Russian battleship. I could adjust that, but I'm not going to. Let's see who they think they're helping. Ah, oh, okay. So these light cruisers are going with those light cruisers. So I'm a little bit concerned with that. Uh, I would like them to perhaps screen the battleships, given that we're going in reasonably close. Okay, they've changed their fire to the Russian battleship. Let's have a look at the range. So 15, 16,000 yards, that's well within their capacity. They've got a hit chance of 3.7. Let's just bring this down here. Basic hit chance of four, crew quality zero. Wish it was better. Fire control of 10, tech level of 20, three ships firing at the same target, can't be helped, they're under fire. So nothing really on the gunnery modifiers here to worry about or that I can significantly change. I don't need to close the range, particularly the Sovietskaya Bielorussia is a 12 incher. Actually opening the range is probably in my favor. Let's bring these cruisers round. And a hit from the second inch, from a, from a light cruiser, it's not going to worry it particularly. So 
So the way that it's unfolding now is I'm going to be engaging this group, possibly with the support of this lot. This large group of these pocket battleships, one, two, three, four, five, six, uh, we're going to be pressing here. So I'm going to definitely move the Marseille's cruisers down and decline that flank. Take the battleships, move them this way. And again, just open the range out because it's pretty close, 12 to 13,000. Just to emphasize the point, my 15 inch guns go to 28,000 and at 12,000 they will pump through, but they equally will pump through at any of these kinds of ranges. As I go out, the uh, hit chance increases, but that's fine. At 12,000, I'm risking uh, torpedoes a little bit, which seems like an unnecessary risk. There's my battle cruisers legging it back up. Hmm, they might might actually get in touch, which would be good. Okay, carry on south of Marseilles. The ships here are um, retreating. So I'm going to straighten up the battleships. Curious that the Russians are hammering it down here. Let's just check. No significant damage. I was just wanting to check the range for torpedoes. So we have at slow 11,500 and at fast just under 5,000 yards. So there it's a 9,000 kind of yard range. It would seem that um, they might get themselves into a good position to have a little pop at the battleship, which seems to be wanting to come our way. Hmm. I'm, I'm humming because my battleships aren't really having too much of an effect. The Russians are running away here, but being very aggressive over there. So the temptation is to bring them over this way, but I'm not going to be tempted. Stay strong. And there goes, without even me asking, a set of torpedoes against the Russian battleships. I'm going to say probably a miss. The AI seems to be very keen on putting things onto line abreast at the moment. That little torpedo uh, run by the destroyers certainly did at least make the Russian battleship turn away. I'm going to bring the Marseille round to aim towards the arriving scouting force who might finally catch up. The battleships, I'm just going to straighten them up and just nudge them over a little bit to stay in contact. Another raft of torpedoes launched. So this group of three destroyers managed to send these guys off, these guys off, and that guy off. Which, even though the uh, torpedoes are most unlikely to actually hit anything, it's quite an achievement for three destroyers to turn back an entire Russian battle fleet. Marseilles can stop heading southward and instead start to uh, turn west. And we, we all seem to be slightly rotating around uh, each other at the moment. Comintern has been hit by the cruisers down here. And I noticed the Bouvet has straddled one of the Russian heavy cruisers. Just tilt the Marseille upwards a little bit. Here come the scouting force. Let's just zoom out and check where on earth these guys have gone to. Okay, they're over there. Probably time to launch a strike. Let's see how many we can set off. Is that our spotting limit? Select the target. Let's make the target. Hmm. I'm going to put the target around about here. And let's 
launch this strike. No need for fighters, particularly, I believe. Launch. Yes, they're going to land at night time. Are you sure you want them not to? This is such a confusing dialogue box. The number of times I say no accidentally. Are you sure you do not want to coordinate the strike? Yes, I am sure I do not want. And they're off. I wish that you, know, you have to look ready flying. I wish the, you know, the dialogue box would say, and they're off. Right, give them a few minutes to see what they can do. So what's happening over here? The light cruiser seems to be a little bit too close. So I'm going to bend the battleships around a little bit. Uh, these chaps are going to follow in the wake. Bath cruisers are doing their thing. This is, I mean, this isn't a big fleet battle, but it is one of the troubles with fleet battles is they can get extremely confusing. So I've hit the common turn and I'm firing up at here with a 15 inch gun. It won't like that. Ah, uh, do say, so they're already firing at the Russian battleship. Bouvet has been hit by the Russian heavy cruiser and has gone through its belt extender. Just going to pop these back onto AI. They do still have a few torpedoes left. Marseilles are going to sneak in behind, joining with these other uh, heavy cruisers. So I think with 55 minutes until dusk, the main chance of success here is going to be the carrier aircraft. So I'm tempted for these chaps to have a little bit of a run against the battleship. So we're going to turn together and see if we can uh, get its attention. Range now of 11. Range now of 8. Straighten up. And let's see if we are in any kind of... So one of them's already fired. I thought I heard the splash. Oh, but curiously, it's been launched in a very strange direction. Oddly enough, the battleship didn't seem to be particularly perturbed. Just going to straighten up these two Ducets so that they get their broadside fully engaged and turn the Marseillaise to join the rest. The Petri and the Bouvet are losing ground against these fleeing pocket battleships, which are 26 knots compared to my battleships at 20 knots. So I'm going to cut across and see if I can't start to uh, make some inroads on the Russian battleship. So that did finally make the battleship uh, retreat. We're now at a reasonable distance here, only 10,000 yards from the Russian battleship. So we're going to bring the bath cruiser's speed down. Otherwise you risk overshooting. And really just waiting for the planes to arrive. Bad this group of armoured cruisers who are concentrated down here have continued to push south. My battleship drove the other force off up to the north. Yep, they seem to be still happily fleeing. Not super scoring many hits. It's funny how my battleships and battle cruisers have started concentrating on this force. These are some more uh, of my heavy cruisers. Oops, didn't notice these two. Uh, I 
think we might just do a very sudden turn away. Yeah, you have to watch that. So there's these as well. So I'm just going to straighten up. Oh, they've hit one of my uh, destroyers. Take it out of IA, take it down to five. More hits on Russian ships down here. My Admiral Sharma's, so 10 inch, you know, perfectly good six inch belt. Straighten up and my battleships. This Russian destroyer is um, getting a pasting. I'm going to put these onto AI. You'll remember them from their rash attack. Just waiting for the planes to arrive. Where are you planes? There's some uh, planes down there, righty ho. Here's that northern group, just check what they're doing. They're still running away. Now, if I zoom out, so it looks like this group of heavy cruisers could undertake me in this direction. This group seem to be still heading east, and this group are still heading north. So they're taking themselves out. This group risk me cutting them off from their base, and this group risk cutting me off from my base or racing down and threatening the, uh, the carrier force, which obviously I don't want. So I need to just have a little think about what I want to do so the temptation is for me to carry on in that direction and for these guys to support and for these guys to support them. And they then undercut me and I undercut them at the same time. But what I think I'm going to do is take my battle cruisers and turn them to the south and take my battleships and turn them to the south and obviously for the heavy cruisers as well. So that my hope is that I split these two forces because this force is still going in that way and this force seems to be going in that way. So if I can encourage that, that might be a thing. The only thing to temper such cunning plans is the time. It's only 15 minutes left. So if I zoom out, yep. There's dusk. Okay, that was a cunning plan, but unwise in the circumstances. So it's time to take my battleships out of any danger. My battle cruisers. No, I do not want a line abreast to equally come down this way. Marseillaise to move out. See what the um, What? Where did that come from? At 8,000 yards? Well, that would be, I think, a lucky shot. Really big flotation hit. It's not flooding. I'm not sure if I completely trust that. Obviously, I'm going to bring the speed all the way down. Send it away and, uh, and see if we can save it. That's annoying. And that kind of thing is only going to get worse. Still no sign of these planes. Ah, 
<laughs> yes! My first ever torpedo attack. One lone brave torpedo bomber. You go. <laughs> and there's the line of dusk uh, just arriving. So. And two more. Come on. Now, in fairness, they are mixing it up down here. So if we can sneak one of those, I'll be a happy man. Didn't seem to do anything. Oh well. Bus and grumble. And look, they've all disappeared. So I'm going to work to form up the fleet a little bit. These need to go down to 16. I think these can do the same. Marseille is on its own. So we've got the two cripples. Let's point them that way and that way. And the bricks can also hit a cruising speed. I think I'm going to describe this battle as minutes from success. Just a few more minutes and that could have been something. Okay, so this is the sort of thing I'm keen to watch. So there's a couple of the Russian heavy cruisers who seem quite keen to continue to engage. They could pick on the poor Marseillaise. Let's just see how you're doing. Because it could make 12 knots, flotation is fine, but I'm keen. You know, 98% damage. Definitely crank these up and go to their rescue. So a little destroyer can come in very handy. Charge them down. Ah! Ah! Let's see if they can do anything. Perhaps it won't be a minute too late. Thing doesn't look like it. I mean, it's in dusk. It's, um... Oh! Should have had more confidence. <laughs> yes. See, just one, dis one good brave destroyer is enough. I mean, really, I would mainly like these guys to um, bugger off. Let's slow this down to cruise. Here comes night. Let's see if we can put it into Goldberg. Oh. <laughs> These two, in all sorts of trouble, but have managed to um, put a torpedo hit in. Well done, lads. I mean, obviously, you're not long for this world. And another one. Oh, that'd be a lesson to you not to go around and something got sunk. 
So what I was feeling was going to be a defeat may turn out to be a small victory. Not as good as the result as I'd hoped. It's always tricky when you only have a very small amount of time. So I get the victory. I think that's possibly a bit generous. Ah, well, that's why, because the Russians had two of their heavy cruisers sunk. I had two destroyers sunk and one the Marseille with heavy damage. So that's okay. Let's have a little look at the ship details. So the Marat, let's look at its log. Wow. <laughs> Nothing happened until air attack and then torpedo magazine hit, ship blows up. From a little destroyer. Well done. And although it sunk, it was a hero. Congratulations. So we salute you, Bron Yuba. According to Google Translate, that means jerk off, which I find hard to um, understand unless someone's got a sense of humor in the uh, naming of ships. Anyhow, one of these modern Arpung classes, and we'll definitely be rebuilding that, did a great job. And that's us. Well, I, th I think that flatters the extent of my victory to give me two prestige points for that. But, you know, I'm not going to argue too much with that. So that's the end of this battle. Thanks for watching. Hope to see you next time. Okay, I want to end. I thought that was a good moment, but it's decided to uh, give me several inventions. So, medium bomber, this is slightly slower, um, but its range is so much bigger. So I'm going to go with the Farman. Oh, we lost a... Um,